guys. Welcome to Better Bachelor. My name is Joker with a face for radio and a voice for print. Uh, I got a few new video clips for us today. If you notice, I'm only doing a video every couple days because I, I just everything is always the same, which is men are awful, women are great. And I know I've told this story before, but I got in this conversation one time with my mom because, you know, she occasionally checks in on my channel and sees the content that I do. And she said, you know, it would be refreshing every once in a while if, if maybe you said some good things women do. I said, Mom, the news media does that. Everybody does that. You know, pick a TV show that's after 1970 where the, the father was represented as, as a good man. He was representative of being smart or funny or interesting. And the woman was the, the silly, crazy one. And she couldn't do it. And the more I see of this stuff, even I need a break after a while. And you just go, my gosh, everybody's going insane. And when it comes down to the, way, the, the dating thing, this is something we've said many times. And I, I know I've seen it in the comment, but it's really seeming to, to kind of feel this way, which is the only winning move is not to play. Dating coaches and red pill guys and pickup artists and all those guys, they're always one to say, well, you're not going to have a woman fall in your lap while you sit at home playing video games. And that's true. It doesn't mean you can't meet someone interesting when you're, I don't know, shopping, if you know a, a little bit how to talk to women, or when you're out and about. But anymore, that's really about the, the only chance I think you have because the minute you show interest, or even in, in a video I'm going to show here in a second, which is this one, is if you don't do everything just exactly right, the right way that women want you to, and, and you, you get, I don't know, you don't live up to her demands, they dump you and walk away. And I posted on, on this particular video because she's like, women will fall out of love with you if you don't do these little things. So just do these little things, except the little things become bigger things and the bigger things become even bigger things. And pretty soon you're having an argument about why you don't turn your socks inside out before you throw them in the laundry machine or something or other. So uh, here, where we're going to start is here. This is from My Geek Wisdom. Um, and it's a quote. But, uh, this is the first hit that popped up the internet on the internet, but it's, it's correct. A strange game, the only winning move is not to play. And this is from the movie War Games, which is, it's, a, it's kind of a fun old 80s movie. It's a 1983 science uh, fiction thriller. So this kid named, uh, what's his name? Uh, I don't even know the kid's name. David Lightman, played by Matthew Broderick. Okay, so David Lightman, he hacks into a, a computer in the United States, uh, and they cause he causes a uh, it to think it's going to strike with a n nuclear attack or something or other, and it's going to automatically do it. It's kind of like AI gone rogue, and it says, "Well, we're we're going to launch some missiles," and he said, "I want you to," and, he, and no matter what he tried to do, he couldn't get it to stop, and so finally he said, "Play yourself in tic tac toe." And it did. And it kept coming up with a draw where, you know, it couldn't win. And then it did the same thing with, you know, the attack. And it said, what a, what a very strange game. Uh, no, you know, no matter, like, the only winning move is not to play, as, as I have on my title here. And that's what I feel dating's like today. Because you have to, you have to first have the right looks and the right physicality and the right personality and the right attitude and the right bank account. And the right outlook and meet in the right way and ask her the right way. And if you don't do this and if you don't text back and you don't text her good morning and you, and this and this, and th there's always something now. And this is, was a problem even back in the early 1900s, which is an article I'm going to briefly talk about near the end of this video. So when guys say, you know something, the juice is not worth the squeeze. We kind of, over the last couple of years, we're talking about just grabbing the lemon or the orange or whatever off the tree and just the effort of squeezing it and then drinking it. And you say, that's not even worth the effort. The juice was not even the effort of me squeezing it. But women have gone so far now is they expect you, they expect you to, to, to plant the lemon tree and nurture and grow the lemon tree and then pick the fruit off the lemon tree and then make, I don't know, lemonade out of it and then drink it and then be pleased, even if it tastes like piss. That's kind of how they are on this stuff. First video I have. So this, this is from something called Red Pill Hub. I've never heard of it. 
But, you know, something that I find is interesting is that uh, there's a lot of content creators that are coming up behind, you know, my generation, which is only five years old. I've only been doing this for five years, but there's a whole nother generation of young guys coming out and they're putting it on TikTok and they're putting it out on the interweb and they're not even referencing my content. They're finding it on their own and making their own videos about it. And to me, this is great because these are young guys in their young 20s that are kind of carrying on the torch of what some of us older guys have been talking about for a while. And now they don't, they kind of send like, dude, I've seen your content. I get it. I want to start talking about this myself. And that's a great thing. So anyway, this is a couple other content creators and this has cringe music as they all do. But I want to play through this because this shows again that if he might be a five, but if he's got money, he's a seven. But if he's short, he's a three. But if he's got a fancy car, he's a four or a six. And if he has a big house, he's an eight. But whatever, he's a four. And women have to do all these mental gymnastics and the math doesn't add up for them or anyone else really for that matter. Let me adjust this a little bit so I don't blow everybody's ears out. I'll start quiet and bring it in a little bit. A 10, but he's short. A one. He's short. If he's a 10, but he's short, he's a one, just like that. That's how much height matters to this woman. Than me, he's a one. Okay, seven. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I really need tall guys, so uh, he's like a six. I just got to pause it because of the cringe music. And of course, uh, YouTube give me a hard time about it per usual. He's a six. Yeah. I have a lot of short friends, but what about he's shorter than you? And then what about shorter than you? Personal opinion, but I'm not, I'm just not attracted to shorter guys shorter than me. So I'm going to go with a five. He's a. F I'm going to pause right there for a second. So uh, now none of these women, like these are not ravishing women. These are, you know, Kentucky fives. <laughs> you know what I'm like they're average or slightly better than average looking. And if he's a 10 in looks, but he's short, I don't know. Uh, you look at. Uh, Tom Cruise, right? Tom Cruise, I think, is like 5'8", five, 5'7". Five, Every time I say a comment, people are like, dude, I just looked, and he's actually only 5'6", or 5'2". Like, you get my point. He's a shorter guy. These women are saying back in his day when he was 35 years old and king of the world, they wouldn't have been swooning over him. Oh, he's shorter than me? No, I don't want anything to do with Tom Cruise. Like, shut up. But they take a 10 down to a 1, 10 to a 5, 10 to a 6, 10 to a 7, just because of height. Now, what happens when you combine height and he's not a millionaire and he doesn't drive the fancy car? Like, you're, every man is a 3, guys. Every man is a 3. I'm going to go with a 5. He's a 4, but he's rich. That's all you know about him. I'll go 7. <laughs> okay. I just got to. Okay. So he's a 10, but he's short. Oh, then he's a, what did she say? He was a four or a five. What did she say? Uh, she said, okay. She said he's a four. Four, but he's rich. That's all you know about him. I'll go seven. Okay. So he's rich, but he looks like a four. Now he's a seven. But if he was a 10, but he was short, he's a five. What happens when he's a 10? Oh, well then he's five, but he's rich. Oh, well, then he's eight, but he doesn't, he doesn't love his mom. Oh, that's a three, but he's a doctor. Oh, well, that's an eight, but uh, uh, he still talks to, uh, he has too many female friends. Oh, that's a three. Uh, <laughs> at what point do you realize there, there's always going to be something that makes you lose every single time? And so even if they start dating you because you're a 10 and you're tall, oh, but you're poor, oh, but you're this, oh, you're out. Oh, he's good. Oh, he's really good looking. Look at that photo. Oh, but we met up and he's an inch shorter than me or he's only an inch or two taller than me. Oh, I'm out. Oh, I found out he was rich. I'm back in again. Oh, I found out. I'm out. I'm in. I'm out. I'm in. I'm out. Six. Okay, so he's like a seven. <laughs> Eight. He's a six, but he drives a luxury. All those were he's a four, but he's rich. And it went up to seven and eights. Seven and eights. 
but what's rich to them? Now, if you remember the video I did on these ladies, rich to them or just getting by is $300,000. Rich is 500 grand or a million or whatever it is. Are we going to meet that criteria? Hell no. Uh, she goes so far to even say he drives a luxury vehicle. He's a six, but he drives a luxury car. He'll bump up a little bit, so seven. Seven. An eight. He's a five. Okay, so every girl gave him one or two points for the car. One or two points for the car. So, but if he's rich and he doesn't drive a luxury car, does that take away from him being rich because he drives a beater, but he likes beaters and he's, he's good with his money. So he doesn't want to waste it. The mental gymnastics, these women jump through. And if you ask a guy, Hey, you meet a woman, she's a seven, but she's, I don't know. She works at Burger King. I'd be like seven, but she's got huge boobs. Ooh, eight <laughs> or whatever. She's got really thick thighs. Ooh, nine. <laughs> You know, what I mean? um, guys' preferences are very like physical for the most part. And is she nice to me? And will she not cheat? Like men are simple. Women are so complex now that it's it's like find, walking a, your way through a, a like a, a minefield. You're going to hit a mine eventually. He's a five, but he has a boat. Eight. He's a five, but he has a boat. He's an eight. Does a canoe count? No. Does a 20-foot uh, fishing trawler count? No. These ladies instantly went to yacht, guarantee you, like 30 or 40-foot yacht. And it says here, uh, from men are not loved for who they are, only for what they can provide. And it's true. And it's true. And for a lot of guys, that's okay. You know, if, if a, a woman came to me, uh, we're just going to be going into pretend world, okay? Let's be realistic. But if a woman came to me and she's seven or eight, she's cute, she's pretty, extremely low body count, she's conservative, she wants to cook and, and kind of stay at home and be a stay-at-home mom, and, and the law couldn't run you over the coals because that's right there. That means... Smart men don't get married. That marriage is out because of that. But let's say that didn't exist. I know a lot of guys that would take that risk. I know a lot of guys that would roll the dice for that. And it's, what are we looking at? Low body count, is she pretty? Do I find her attractive enough I want to sleep with her? Does she treat me well? None of those are money. None of those are what the woman provides. Uh, yes, it'd be great if she cooks or would like to cook, but I, I have to cook for myself. Women have to cook for themselves if they know how to. Otherwise, they eat out all the time. I don't think that's asking too much. Everything a man wants is, am I attracted to her? And will she kind of give me the punani and and love me for who I am and not cheat on me. That actually boils down to someone's character, who they are, what choices they make in their lives. Are they a good or bad person? Everything these women just said boils down to what is he going to provide for me? What is he going to give me? Because if he's a 10, but he's short, instant gone. And, and fine, you look, if you say, hey, that's part of attraction, I'm not going to argue with that. I get it. There's a lot of women that don't like short dudes. That's fine. But then when they say he's a five or he's short or whatever, but he's also a millionaire and he's got a luxury yacht and drives a fancy car, they're like, oh, I'm back up to an eight again. What does that tell you? They're materialistic. They only value you for what you look like. And if they're attracted to you, they'll sleep with you. They'll even let you impregnate them. But they don't want you to be baby daddy. They want the rich guy to be baby daddy, but they don't want him to impregnate them. <laughs> like, it just goes on and on. Here's another example I have. Now, this one is pushing back directly against Jeremy over at the quartering, uh, Tim Poole, um, Matt Walsh, and the Daily Wire crew. All This is the chick that said she went out with a really cute hot guy, and he just gave her the plastic and said, like, oh, go order us drinks, and he paid for everything on the date. And she was like, y'all, I felt feminism leaving my body. I did a video about this. And I said, it's a trap. I said, she's not going to get rid of her feminist values. She's not going to be instantly like wanting to suddenly live on a farm, cook, be, you know, pregnant housewife and have traditional values. Because you see right here, 
the search bar, this is not my video, by the way. I, I just yanked it up off the, off the internet here. But you can see the search bar says Matt Walsh because she did a search on Matt Walsh and she saw the video he did about her. The feminine didn't leave, the feminism didn't leave her body. She just wants a rich, tall dude that's good looking that will pay for everything and he's conservative valued, but she still wants to be a feminism, a feminist. This is what I can't get any of these like conservative traditional trad cons that say, oh my gosh, look, look, here's a perfect example. If you just find a woman like this, guys, you can be happily married and, and everything will go well. It's a trap, brother. And even they admit it. I went extremely viral on Republican Twitter and then ended up on Fox News. This was honestly the most iconic and funny thing that's ever happened to me. So a few weeks ago, I went on a date with this guy and he paid for all my drinks. And so then I posted a TikTok as a joke that was like, the feminism has left my body because this man paid for my drinks. It was a joke. It was hyperbolic. So I post that TikTok in the morning. And when I come back later in the day, it is blown up on Republican Twitter. Like, Matt Walsh, big Republican guy, I guess, posts this like podcast episode episode where he's analyzing my video and he's like, yeah, she's willing to give up feminism when she gets her drinks paid for, but does she have the fortitude to give up feminism and cook and clean for her man and get in the kitchen? I was like, I don't know, Matt Walsh. It was a joke. I haven't thought that far. I went uh, that, there you go. Exactly what I keep saying to these trad cons and these guys that are, that, are, oh, well, she's changed her ways. Now, now she shows videos on TikTok of her cooking dinner for her family instead of on OnlyFools. It's a trap. They're still on social media. You know, when someone's really happy, when someone's really happy with their life and things are going well and they're content with what's going on in their life, do you know what they don't do? Scream about it on social media. Hey, everybody, look at me, look at me, look at me. No, they're not doing that. They're just living a good life. They're just happy. They're just doing their thing. It's kind of ironic because I'm sitting here talking about this stuff, but it's because I want to share uh, the experiences so you guys know what's going on. Happy people are not on social media all the time when it comes to these TikTokers, you know, doing their personal blogs and explaining everything and telling you how happy they are. If you need to go online to try to convince everybody that you're happy, you're failing. As a matter of fact, Chelsea Handler, I just thought of this. Let me pull up Chelsea Handler, comedian. <laughs> Chelsea Handler. Uh, here it is. I found it. I can't play the audio on it um, because oh, actually, let me let me copy this and put it in a new window. All right, there we go. Uh, this is this is Chelsea Handler. She is forty nine years old now, a couple years uh, younger than me. She's got the mommy belly going on, the wrinkly mommy belly. Even though she's never had kids, I'm going to just mute this here. And what is she doing to celebrate her forty ninth birthday? She's skiing down a ski slope in a bikini with her dog strapped on her back and he's got goggles on. Um, and she's, she's smoking a, now I give her this, she's a decent enough skier. She can go down the slope with probably a vodka and tonic in her hand while smoking a, smoking something uh, while she's skiing. So she knows how to ski, props on that. But she, does she look, if she's really happy guys, if she's really happy, is she just living her life or doing her thing? Or is she going on social media, showing off her dogs, dressed with goggles, and look at me, I'm in a bikini, I'm still beautiful and relevant, pay attention to me, and please pay attention to me. Oh my God, why are people not paying attention to me anymore? That is not a very, holy crap, that is not a flattering look. She, pause for gosh sakes, Twitter. That is not, not a flattering look. Yellowing teeth, like crow lines and not a great look, but I don't care. Like if she's happy being single without kids and everything else, great. You know what she did last year for a video? She posted herself going online saying how she wakes up early. She gets herself off. She has some wine for breakfast. She goes back to sleep again until noon. Then she gets up and lollygags and goofs off all day. Great. Good for you. That's fine. Why are you telling everybody on social media? Why are you doing this on social media? Look at me, pay attention to me. Look, I'm happy. No, I'm seriously, I'm happy. Look at me, look, 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 I'm happy. It always ends the same way. It always ends the same way for these women, which is they're happy, they're, they're having the best years of their life and they have to tell you about it so that you cheer them on. 
so that you feel good for them, so that you praise them and, oh, you're so stunning and brave and awesome. They need that outside validation because when it goes away, which it will for all of us, there's going to be a day where nobody cares about Joker from Better Bachelor anymore. Oh, that old dude, his content was great back in the day, or it was awful back in the day, depending on how you feel about it. Who cares? Kevin Samuels did a great body of work. I mean, he really put a lot of content out there. He was good for the men's community. When was the last time you thought about Kevin Samuels? You know, poor guy ends up dropping over from a heart attack at, I don't know, 50-something years old. And, and the world moves on, and it's sad, and it sucks, but it does. And it's going to move on for all of us. But with women like this and Chelsea and these other ones, they can get by being so crude and rude and, and nasty to men because, uh, as I think it was Rich Cooper that once sent, said this, they're sixes that are sleeping with tens being chased by threes. And the tens are only sleeping with them. They don't want to date them. So these women are getting what they want. They're, she, they're sleeping and maybe end up getting pregnant and having kids with these great looking guys that can't rub two pennies together in many cases. And then they want, you know, Danny Provider that's going to come on the backside and take care of their bad decisions while they still go on social media screaming to everybody how awesome and happy they are. And the only reason things are the way they are today is a few reasons, feminism, social media, and the government and, and mainstream media supporting women so much to the point that it's a detriment. And, and matter of fact, here's a great example of it, now that I think about it. Uh, Gemini's the new woke uh, AI by Google. And I said, you know, I wonder what they can, I wonder what they can tell me about even my YouTube channel. So I typed in, what can you tell me about the YouTube channel Better Bachelor and its content creator, Joker? They say the YouTube channel Better Bachelor, primary geared towards men, channel's creator goes on uh, by the online persona Joker, expresses often controversial opinions and takes a critical stance on various aspects of society, particularly regarding gender dynamics and social interactions. It offers a mix of videos, blah, blah, blah. And it says criticism. The channel has received criticism from its often controversial and potentially harmful views, particularly regarding its portrayal of gender roles in relationships. Some critics argue that the content uh, can be misogynistic and promote unhealthy relationship dynamics. What's interesting is the unhealthy relationship dynamics I say, don't sleep around, don't get married, uh, uh, Make sure she has low body count. Make sure she's not crazy or on social media. She's not looking for validation that she's actually going to be genuinely invested in the relationship. That now, that now is very controversial. They say it's important to note this, ch this channel's uh, content is not universally accepted and its views may not be representative of the majority opinion on the topics it's co it, co it, it covers. Now, what about the feminist channel Feminist Frequency, I asked the same question. What can you tell me about YouTube channel uh, Feminist Frequency and its creator, Anita Sarkeesian? It says, founded by Arnita, Ar, uh, Anita Sarkeesian in 2009, uh, organization creating video commentaries, analyzing gender representations in popular culture media, particularly video games. Don't I do the same though, particularly in social media? Notable content included the series, Tropes and Women's Channel Faced Significant Controversy and Online Harassing, right? So they say, oh, well, it, it, that channel got attacked. My channel, mm, it's, it's controversial. They don't say anything about my channel. Of course, it hasn't really been. They ceased operations 2023. Um, they say uh, the channel description clarifies that it's only the podcast Feminist Frequency Radio that continues with host Kate Spada. Uh, founder of Feminist Frequency and a prominent figure in video game criticism uh, about Arne Anita Sarkeesian. Her work analyzing gender portrayals in games sparked important conversation about diversity and inclusion in the gaming industry. But notice that on my, on my work analyzing gender 
and, and the portrayals in dating and in culture didn't spark important conversations. No, mine's criticized. It's questionable material. Uh, she faced a significant online people pushing back against her, which unfortunately became a catalyst for discussions about online impact. And it's important to note that uh, their work generated diverse reactions and perspectives. So hers generated diverse reactions and perspectives. Mine it's important it's not universally accepted and the views may not be representative of the majority opinion on the topics it, it covers. So even the AI, I can't, that's my dating profile of the day, even the AI uh, is making it clear that mine is problematic because of my views on it, but her views are acceptable. So hers is lauded and acceptable, except it got some online hate from people. Even the AI, because AI is only as good as the way it's been programmed, it's been being programmed by the woke over at Google. And so my work criticized her work, stunning and brave. And all it does is it says, and I'm actually the one that's saying, women, please stop. Women do better. Theirs is men bad. Women do whatever you want. Okay. How's that going to turn out for you? The only winning move is not to play. There's going to be a point where AI, someone's going to quote AI, and they're going to say, well, such and such AI told me this, and you're going to say, well, it's woke. It's worthless. But this AI said this. Well, they're going to say, well, that's right-wing propaganda. So what happens? News will never agree upon. Uh, society, we won't agree upon. What women should and shouldn't do, what men should and shouldn't do, we'll never agree upon. The news and the sources it comes from, we'll never agree upon. We're too bifurcated. We're too divided. There is, I mean, there's living together. You can live together with people at this point, but you're never going to change their minds. And so these young women, like I'm going to show in this video today, they're toast. They're never going to come back around until, until you end up, you know, social media, people are ignoring you. Uh, the few friends you had are now just like you, or they move away for a job opportunity, or they maybe get married to some, I don't know, blue pill loser, and you're all alone, and no one cares about you on social media anymore. Then what do you have? You've got nothing. And, and I'll give women this much. At least they have a spine. At least women have a spine. At least they stand up for themselves. And what I mean is these women online, and, and this, this video is going to exemplify this. This guy goes around asking women, uh, do women need men? Every one of them answered no. And then when he goes up and he asks men, do men need women? The guys are like, well, yeah, of course we do. Does that show the men are being reasonable and the women are lunatic insane? Yes, it does. But it also goes to show you that until men start playing the same game as women, men are going to get suckered in to being in relationships and in situations where women are just going to run them over. And until they stand up for themselves, they're going to fail. And if you want to know how that goes, look at most countries' uh, politics right now. Like conservatives are, and those of, of free mind, free speech are getting run over while the authoritarian left comes in and tells everybody what to do because of my feelings. Uh, I'm going to start the volume on this one a little lower. It's got a lot of lo uh, loud background noise. Do we need men? No. Do we need men? Um, no. No? We don't need short men. Do you need a man? No. Do you need a man? Oh, God. Do you need a man? No. Do we need men? No. Why? No. Do we need men? No? Do we need men? We need men to make us stupid. Do we need... We, we need men to make us stupid. Okay. Men? Do we need men? The women? And, and what's funny is that one right there, she's with a guy. Now, I don't know if he's actually with her, but what's... Instead of, like, saying something like, what do you mean you don't need me? You don't need me? All right, good luck. Walk home. No, of course not. He's just going to stand there like a lump. Now, but even if, even if you're friends, if I'm friends with my friend Matt and somebody says, uh, you know, hey, do you need people like him around? And he's like, no, nah, he's worthless. I'd be like, F you, dude. 
and that'd be the end of our friendship. Unless he was joking around and being a prick, like most guys do. But if he was being serious, I'd be like, all right, well, piss off. But, but men still, even there are so many men today that see this, and they're like, well, but yeah, these women are different. Okay. Go to, are you going to go at 8 p.m. on a Friday to a church and find a woman studying a Bible? Maybe then you'll find the answer you want. But guess what? She still divorces men and takes half their crap at the same rate everybody else does. So she might give you the right answer, make you feel good about it. But what happens at the end of the game when she decides, well, I'm done playing this game. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to collect my paycheck and leave. It's still the same answer. Well, I do need you. I'm, I'm worthless. Uh, judge, your honor. I am just a stupid, worthless, broke woman can't work. I'm too, I'm too tired. I'm too stupid. I need his money. I need his support. Well, then they're, you know, edging on being artarded. But the minute, the minute they, they're not getting the cash and prizes, well, I don't need a man. No, until you can get something from him. Again, go back to seeing they only want you if you can provide something where men actually genuinely care about who a woman is, what she's done in her past, the mistakes, if she's learned from them, if she's a good person. Men genuinely need that. Women don't care as long as you give them what they want and let them do what they want to do. Do we need men? Do women need men in this world? Do we need men? No. Why? Because we can be strong independent women. Do we need men? Like, not necessarily, but like, if I can look at them. We need a man to look at. Do we need men? No. no. Why? Nobody needs men. Really? We do not need men. Why not? Why do we need men? We don't want men. Why, why would I need men? So what, what What? can you get from someone else that you don't get from a man? The only thing I can get from a man that I can't get anywhere else, anywhere else is dick. Okay. And I don't need dick. Do we need so think about this. Let's. I always like to do the role reversal in your head. Do the role reversal in your head. Imagine you walked out on a night downtown and you ask all the guys, do men need women? And the guys are like, no, for what? Why? They, they're stupid. They can't do anything. They're irritating. They're worthless. There'd be a, there would be a story written about it and you know, news at 11, hundreds, thousands of men are horrible to women. And then, and then what if a couple of men on there said, uh, we need women to look at. We need women to sleep with. We need women to do our dishes. <laughs> oh, there'd be a problem. There would have to be a conversation had with the, the male youth of today. But when it's the reverse, eh, who cares? Now, granted, some of these guys have some pretty based answers, but you'll see what I'm talking about. We need women. Yes. We do. Why? These women are awesome. Do we need women? Of course. Why? Because they're beautiful. <laughs> he says because they're beautiful. Again, kind of the same answer I was just talking about. But if you listen in the background, uh, he's got a woman right next to him going, yeah, you do need women. Shut up. Do we need women? Women make us feel compassionate and affectionate. Do we need women? Of course we do. Do we need women? Yes. Why? Because they're hot. And what else? They're hot. Do we need women? I mean, shit, unless you're gay. Do we need women? Do we need women? Yeah. Yes, who's going to do my dishes? <laughs> Based answer of the night. What's the difference? The guys are kidding around, some of them. Others are just straight up like, yeah, of course we need women. And, you know, one guy quite admittedly is like, yeah, they're hot. Why? I mean, yes. which is... Why? which is a based answer, but he's also in pretty good shape. He looks, I don't know what team, team Atkins is, but he's in pretty good shape. Not a bad looking dude. He's probably getting some action. So of course he needs them and he wants the pretty ones. So let's say you finally do get a girlfriend. Things are going along well. What This, this video went viral uh, over on, on uh, uh, Twitter this week. And, and I posted it on my Twitter account, at Bachelor Joker, if you're on Twitter. She says, if you're a boy who has ever been dumped by your girlfriend, notice she says, if you're a boy who's been dumped by your girlfriend, they don't think of, of younger guys as men or as a guy. You're a boy. A boy references a child. 
that's what these women think of you. I think in many of these cases, they, they, you're, a convenient, you're a convenient thing to have around, but you're a boy, you're a child. Which, which, you know, basically ties immaturity and, and youth to you. But listen to her wraparound of how just a guy not texting in the morning is enough to break up with, with a guy that you love. Not that you're just dating, but a guy that you love. If you're a boy who has ever been dumped by your girlfriend for seemingly no apparent reason and you're looking for answers, this is what happened. Okay, this is you guys. You guys are in a happy relationship, and now all of a sudden you have one simple, fixable problem. For this example, we're gonna use no good morning text. And your girlfriend who loves you, she's really happy with you. She comes to you and she tells you, she's like, hey, do you think we could start doing good morning texts? Like, it'd mean a lot to me if you text me good morning. So you, her loving boyfriend, agree to give her good morning texts. But something happened, and for whatever reason, you stopped giving her good morning texts. So now we have a bigger problem. She now thinks that you don't care enough about her to send her good morning texts, even though she asked. But she's gonna be like, you know what? This is still kind of a small problem. I'm just gonna remind him. She reminds you, you're like, oh my gosh, that's right. I did agree to that. Okay, I will text you good morning. Unfortunately though, you didn't follow through again. Now we have confirmed that you do not care enough to text her good morning, even though this is a simple, fixable problem. Notice she says it's a fixable, simple problem. Do you know what she doesn't? Do you know what she doesn't say? All right, well, he keeps forgetting or he gets busy or he goes to the gym and he's got other things on his mind, probably work, uh, maybe some other, you know, bigger issues than than good morning. Trust me, if you could program a phone to send 15 random texts at certain times, that would be a life changer. Maybe that's what we need. We need an app where a guy could say, good morning, kitten, uh, morning, mo uh, hey, hope you have a good day. Just program those into your phone and have it randomly send them out between whatever time you set, 8 and 8.15. That would have saved his relationship. But you know what she didn't say? You know what she didn't say? Hey, you know what? I know you got busy and I know you got things going on. And I, I, it makes me feel nice. Like it makes me feel nice if you do this but I get it. You got a lot going on. I'll try to be understanding too if you forget. That would be the 50-50 answer, right? Like, I would like you if, the, if you do this. And the guy says, I'll try. But a lot of times I get my head about work and other things and I got a lot going on right now and I'm, I'm probably going to forget occasionally, right? The 50-50 would be her saying, okay, please try to remember. My 50% will be, I'm understanding if you get things going on. But no, there's nothing in here suggesting she should settle or change her mind or be accepting or no it just goes from i told you i want this i remind you i want this you haven't done it now we've got a big problem this is now a big problem so now your girlfriend who has never picked fights before in her life starts picking a bunch of little fights about all these different things because she believes that you do not care enough you don't care enough about her because you didn't do what she wanted. Now, let's. these are the, the examples, if you're just listening. These are the examples that she writes down about what she's going to pick uh, uh, other fights about. So you, you, didn't, you didn't share the texts. Here's the other problems we now are going to have fights about. He didn't compliment my haircut. That's a fight. He didn't remember my dog's birthday. That is now a fight. I don't remember my own dog's birthday. I don't remember really even the year. I think he's 11 this year. And I think I got him in June or July. That's about as close as I get. And it's my own dog. What it, I'm supposed to remember your dog's birthday and what? Bring over a treat? Dogs eat other, like dogs eat cat crap and they're excited. Do you really think they need a special $18 foofy cupcake from the dog store? This is how women think. Uh, five minutes late to dinner, we're having a fight. It's not about why. It's not what happened. It's we're fighting now. And he left dishes in the sink. Remember, this is somebody she loves. Starts picking a bunch of little fights about all these different things because she believes that you do not care enough. 
Through all of these picking fights with you, though, she still loves you and likes you enough to want to be with you, even though you guys have all these little problems now. Until one day, these become unattractive to her. She's going to realize that all of these little things that you do that remind her that you don't care about her enough are unattractive. Now, imagine you're in this relationship with this girl. She says she loves you. In this video, she's explained your boyfriend that you still love enough to be with. But because the reminder text didn't happen, and then you didn't compliment the, the haircut and the dog's birthday, and you were late to dinner once, and you left dif dis dishes in the sink, these are unattractive qualities about you. Now, if you ask me, what is an unattractive quality in a woman or in someone? I would say always being negative, like always complaining about things. Either fix it or realize you can't fix it and stop complaining about it. Problem solved. I don't like people that complain all the time. Something else, I don't like big people. I don't like overweight girls. If you're dating a girl and she starts gaining a little weight and you say, hey, let's let's nip this in the bud and let's bring it back. I'll do. I'll join you. I'll help you. I'll be supportive, but I don't like this. Let's, let's head this in a new direction, right? Those are the big ones. If I say, hey, can you, I don't know, send me a good morning text, which I wouldn't because I'm not a woman, but if I ask for something like that and she doesn't do it, is, is it a, like unattractive quality? See, when men are looking for qualities in women, they're looking for things that are big, big qualities. Do we have life goals that are similar? Do we have, um, do we feel the same way about marriage or relationships or society or voting or, or freedoms or whatever? And then if a woman goes from like conservative to freaky feminist, then a guy has got a reason. But if like, I, when, when would it be that I, I freshly shave my head and I'm like, you didn't compliment on my, my nice shiny head and now we're going to fight this is an unattractive quality about you. Fix it. If this is what takes it takes to go from loving woman who loves you to you're unattractive to me is little stuff like this, you don't win that game. There's never a way you win this game. And too many people today say, yeah, but dude, this is just one woman. Except there's thousands and tens, tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands of videos on TikTok and social media and posts on Twitter. And women are just outing themselves as horrible everywhere. And even if you said, well, dude, you've only given five examples in this video. Okay, but I've done, uh, I don't know, 13, 1400 videos. We'll round it to 1500 videos, five examples each. My brother, that's 7,500 women that are horrible. I'm just one dude on YouTube. What about all the ones that are on social media that I never see? How, how, do you, how do you win this game? Genuine question. And so now the problem is not these things. It's not even that you don't care enough. It's not even that she never got good morning texts. It's that she literally does not like you anymore. Does not like you. Now, unfortunately, she has to break up with you. And then you're gonna ask her why. And she's gonna list out all the reasons why she has to break up with you. And you are going to say, no, you should not break up with me because of those reasons, because from now on, I am going to do all of these things. And you will never have to worry about me never doing these things again, because I'm gonna do them every single day. But remember, it doesn't even matter if you were to do all of these things anymore, because the problem now is that she's unattracted to you and just simply does not like you anymore. And now she's going to go move on with her life and you're going to go and tell your friends that you got dumped by absolutely no reason and that you guys all hate her and that she's crazy for dumping you over something so simple. But in reality, she never dumped you at all. This was a slow moving process that eventually led to the final reason and you weren't dumped. You probably actively chose not to give her what she said she needed. And now you guys, you guys aren't together anymore. So. Yes, the, all the guys will call you crazy. Because if I said I broke up with my girlfriend and they'd be like, dude, what happened? I'm like, she didn't send me good morning texts and she didn't compliment me on my haircut and she didn't remember my dog's birthday. And they'd be like, well, was she good to you other than that? I'm like, yeah. They'd be like, are you batshit crazy? Like, dude, she was a good woman. Are you nuts? 
because all the things she just pointed out that made her unattra- or made you unattractive to her for men is zero. They're non sequiturs. But then, then women turn around and say, so what if I have a body count of a hundred? What do you mean you don't find that attractive? Well, you're a loser. This is okay. Body count of 100 doesn't text in the morning. Who's the crazy person? Has 23 guys and wants to go out every Friday and Saturday to the club without the boyfriend, but didn't remember my dog's birthday. Who's the crazy person? Because I'll tell you now, it's not the guys. It's not the guys. And then she says she's unattractive. Your unattractive qualities. And if you remember, if you then remember, I did not know you were batshit crazy. So I guess if it means that like for us to stay together and try to salvage a relationship, I'll try, I'll, I'll put a calendar notice on my phone for your dog's birthday because apparently you're nuts. And then uh, I'll, I'll put on my calendar when you go get a haircut to make sure that I notice it because you're nuts. What does she say? No, it's too late. None of that matters. No redemption, no fixing it, no making this work. I am now completely unattracted to you. And, and you would be surprised the number of women that under this Twitter post that were like, yes, girl, that is exactly me. And what were the guys posting? You're effing nuts. You're nuts. Can you imagine my mom? I, I try to picture this going back to a previous generation older than mine, or even my generation, because I know my friends would call me nuts if I, if I broke up with a good girlfriend or wife or whatever because of this stuff. But then women also want men to, to stay in the relationship and work through her cheating with his coworker. <laughs> so what it really boils down to is do what I want you to do or this is not going to work. Oh, you want me to do what you want? You, you want me to do what you want in the relationship? This is problematic and you're controlling. You won't do what I want in the relationship. I am un- unattracted to you and you don't care about me. It's manipulation. That's all this is. And then the replies on Twitter just went just like you expect, where the guys are like, she's crazy. And the women are like, yes, slay queen. I identify with this 100%. That you don't win this game. The only way to win is by not playing. You don't, you don't play games with crazy people because they'll go crazy. They'll flip the table over or ruin the game. And then I, I, I grabbed this one too because... It's women don't women say they're uncomfortable with you just walking up to them and asking them out or staring at them, trying to get up the courage to go talk to them. So then guys say, okay, maybe I'll try. I'm going to try so she doesn't think I'm a creeper. I'm going to try to have a little banter with her, like to just a little bit of a conversation to feel things out, to see if maybe there's a little connection or spark, or I can tell that she's interested in me. Um, and, you know, if she gives me the cold shoulder or she's kind of off put by me, I'm going to stop. I'm not going to talk to her because obviously it's clear that she's not into me. And then I won't even ask her out and it won't be uncomfortable. But I'll just say hello or try to make small talk for a second. Well, this woman, that's a problem. That's a problem. Get to the point, guys. Quit wasting her time. If you are a man and you're asking out a woman, you need to get to the point. I'm saying this to try to be helpful because I've been getting asked out a lot for some odd reason and every time it's so awkward and they're just like trying to make small talk and I'm like, sir, let's go get to the point. Go up to her, say, hey, I think you're really beautiful. Can I get your number? Hey, I think you're pretty and I would love to hang out sometimes. Something simple and flattering, but we all need to move on with our day. We don't need to make small talk. And also remember to look at their ring finger and see if they're married before you ask them out. You can't. Okay, here's the thing in this video, guys. In this video, she says, look at their ring finger. She's she's got a, it looks to be an engagement ring. My dudes, unless, now maybe, maybe this video is flipped. Because if she's in the driver's seat and the video is mirrored, okay, maybe it's her left hand that she's holding up. So maybe it's, maybe she's got a ring on her finger. 
because the writing up here is backwards. But I, you know, so so maybe this is her left hand. But if if you can't see her left hand, or you're at an angle, or she's holding something and it's away from you, and you go up and try to converse with her a little bit and gauge the situation, or can't see, she could she could just say, "Oh, thank you very much, I appreciate it," but I'm 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 in a relationship, or "Oh, thank you, I'm not in, interested." That would be the nice way. And then the guy could say, oh, I'm so sorry, I didn't see the ring, whatever. But instead she wants to complain that a guy is now trying small talk before asking her out. And guys, if, if she never got the small talk and the guys just walked up to her and asked her out, she'd say, guys, you need to small talk a little bit and, and let the girl know that you're not crazy or creepy if you want her number. Like you've got to let her know you've got a good personality and you're not dangerous or creepy. So try to have a little bit of a conversation with her so she's not freaked out by you. That would, if, so that's what happened if guys just got to the point. And then when guys don't get to the point, the complaint is the guys didn't get to the point. They wanted to have a conversation first. And, and she says, she says it's, I find it weird that guys are coming up to me and asking me out a lot recently. Why is that a problem? That, that men find you attractive and so they're coming up and saying something to you? See, that's a problem now. That's, a, that's also problematic. So if, if, you, if you're trying to get your nerves up to talk to a woman and you're glancing at her, you're a creep. If you don't look at her and ignore her, you're an a-hole. If you go up right away and ask for her number, you're too pushy, you're too aggressive, and she doesn't know who you are, you might be a bad guy. If you go up and talk to her and, and you try to make small talk, get to the point you're wasting our time or you didn't pay attention to it. Like, at what point do you win? What point do you win the game? What point does this become successful? And that's the key. This is a game you never can win. No matter what you do, you will lose. And so just like we say on the thumbnail, the only winning move is to not play. This, um, let's see, I'm getting a little long. This is a day in life of a single woman. And she goes through and talks about all the things she does all day and how she don't need no man and she's strong and powered. What does she do? She does a little bit of yoga on social media in front of the camera. And then she goes and makes a coffee on social media in front of a camera. And then uh, she sits down, she lights a candle to sit down at her laptop to do work on social media in front of a candle. And then she puts on Uggs and walks around the city and she walks into a restaurant where she eats a salad on camera in front of social media. And then wrapping it all up, uh, she looks through a cookbook, she founds a recipe and she cooks it in life for herself on camera for social media. See, every woman right now, not every woman, that's unfair for me to say that. There's so many women right now that their lives they're, they're an actress in their own play, like I've said in another video, that if nobody, if I guarantee you 100%, if this woman did this video and all the videos she put up on TikTok or TikTok or whatever, if she published all those videos and they got three likes and no comments and no one was paying attention to her and no one said anything to her, she would be miserable and lonely. This video is about how she doesn't, she don't need no man. She's stunning and brave the day in the life of a single woman. Why is she happy? Because she has lots of likes and adoring fans on the internet that wouldn't care if she disappeared tomorrow. See, that's the problem. She's basing her life and her popularity and how good her life is and how uh, awesome she is based on strangers on the internet and the number of likes and comments she gets on a post. And if she doesn't get enough likes and comments, she does something more outrageous. And if that doesn't get enough, she wears a smaller outfit. And if that doesn't get enough, she get, wears something even skimpier. And then she does something crazy. And if that doesn't work, she tries being a trad con online. And if that doesn't, like, it's always for strangers on the internet. There's sixes sleeping with tens being chased by threes. That is the entirety of the internet right now. Because if the internet went down tomorrow and she realized, I don't have any friends in this city. I don't have a man. I don't really like my coworkers or know anything about them. I'm, I'm completely alone. 
and she spent week after week like that, she would be miserable. She'd be, she'd be looking for a beam to throw a rope over, if you know what I mean. But because the, these people can get on the internet and see all the love and adulation of bots and people that don't care about them, they're like, oh, my life is awesome. Look how popular I am. Not realizing that if she stopped posting tomorrow, the world would move on and never remember she existed. See, at least I know that. So when people say, oh yeah, but you're on YouTube and you're on social media. Yeah, if tomorrow if my Twitter account got removed or, or there was an error, I'd go start another one. Would I lose any sleep? I lost 17,000 followers. No. If they ban Better Bachelor for some weird reason, I'm over on Locals. I'm over on Rumble. I'm over on Odyssey. I don't know if I'm still over on, on BitChute. Anyway, I have, but I have other places that I am. And if I got nuked, I'd start over again. Not because of the love and the adulation. I don't, you notice I, I never, ever, ever, I'm like, guys, please like this video. Please become a subscriber today. It helps me in the YouTube algorithm. I don't say that stuff. I mean, very, very rarely. Just as a reminder to check to make sure most people are still subscribed because a lot of times guys say, oh my gosh, I was un unsubscribed. I didn't even realize it. Why? I don't care how many subscribers I have. I care how many views I have and I hope my message and my, my crit, crit, uh, criticizing bad women and telling young men and, and even old men like myself, hey man, like it's not you, the world is crazy and, and you're still good, trust me. I hope that message gets out there. That's what's important to me. They, they don't have a message. They're not sharing anything important. They're showing how to make, I don't know, fettuccine out of like chocolate cereal. Like I don't, I don't even know what these people do. And what, what's the ultimate reward for this? This is what happens. A single woman humbled after a man stops chasing after her. The, the, again, you could say, oh, she's pretty. I don't know what she looks like without the makeup. She's definitely got a, a little bit of the, of the, the urban city in her, in her uh, vocabulary. But eventually, even guys that are like, look, I'd like you, and, and I'm trying to date you or trying to go out with you or trying to make something happen, even those guys are going to be like, I found somebody else. Or I'm just, you're not worth it anymore. And, and the, the young men in the other video that I showed where uh, it, it, they were being asked, like, like these guys, like, do women matter? These guys are all young. You know, they probably grow up in good families. They, they believe women matter. You know, they, they believe women matter. Of course, but what happens after a while when they, they're just pounded down into the dirt? Eventually, they're going to say, I don't know, man. Relationships haven't worked out. I mean, yeah, they're, they're important for society, I guess, but they're not doing me so good. They're not doing me any favors. I think that's how a lot of men end up. Anyway, here's what uh, Miss Thing thinks after he decided she's not worth the effort. I am in shock. I am in in disbelief. I just tell me why. This man gonna give me the biggest reality check. This man gonna invite me out, right? And I couldn't go. And usually when I be telling him no, he be getting a little bit in his feelings. And I would expect nothing less if you actually get you feel me? Um anyway, that's just my opinion. But so I had to tell him no. So I text him back, talk about, oh, I can't. I know you finna be upset or whatever, whatever. He responds and says, nah, it ain't that deep. <laughs> <laughs> Since when? Hmm? So she's been asked out before. And when she can't go, she tells him that. And he's a little bit, you know, like, hey, let's, why not? Or when can we do this? Or let's do something. That means he likes you, stupid woman. That means he likes you. It means he's trying to make something happen. It means he wants to go out with you. And yeah, his feelings are a little hurt if you're like busy or something else because he feels like he probably comes second to whatever other plans you had. Because if she said, hey, I want to come over and hook up and he's like, nah, I'm playing video game with the boys. I guarantee you she's going to be upset. What, video games and hanging out with the guys is more important than me? Being able to hook up with me and being, what, you don't find, and you know the attitude that comes out, right? So, when the, when the role's reversed, oh boy, is she angry. And now she's like, wait, since when? Since when does, uh, am I not that important? How dare you? Oh, where's Greta? How dare you? How dare you not find me important? And now what, what's she thinking, guys? Play along with me. 
what's she thinking when he's like, nah, like you're not, you're not worth getting worried about. You know what she's thinking now? Damn, he got another woman. He got another woman he is messing with. Who's my competition? I'm going to lose him. Uh, maybe she's hotter than me. I better start playing I spy with my little eye and doing some investigations. See, when you're too available to a woman, she's like, uh, he doesn't have any other options than me. And I'm probably the best thing he has. So I don't even have to try. And he's lucky to have me. But when a guy's like, look, I got five more just like you. Go away. I don't need you in my life giving me hassle. That's when women are like, what do you mean you got five more like me? Uh, who are they? How'd you meet them? Why are you talking to them? What do they look like? How do you know them? <laughs> like all the questions start coming out because they realize, uh-oh, he's got options and they might be better than me. What if there are better options? It means I'm going to lose. And that is why a lot of times the guys in the pickup and the guys in the dating gurus are always like, like they, they call it spinning plates, which means like if you looked at the old circus acts, uh, there'd be guys that would, you know, hit the side of a plate get it spinning on a stick and then, you know, and, and you get these plates spinning on top of the sticks. And all you have to do is make, you have to keep touching contact and, and coming back to these things spinning in the air and making sure uh, that you're never too preoccupied with one because all the other plates will fall off the sticks. That's why they call it spinning plates. And if one plate spins off a stick, you don't care as a man because you have four other sticks. Believe it or not, you can have that same exact mindset even if you have zero other women. He might not have any other women. He might just be like, you know what? I got better stuff to do than you. I got other things I want to do. I'm tired of getting played. I'm tired of talking to you. I'm tired of you blowing me off. I'm going to do other things. And, and I've, people may argue with me. They may push back against this. But a man who has proper frame, in other words, his mindset is correct, and He's confident in himself and he has a happy, fulfilled life is if a woman says, starts giving him a hard time, he doesn't need other plates spinning. He doesn't need other women to be messing with, to not put too much time and energy into one woman. He doesn't need other women as a distraction because what he has as a distraction instead are male friends and hobbies and activities, maybe a side hustle. He's got other things going on in his life. So when she says, hey, I'm going to blow you off, he's like, that's fine. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be out with the boys anyway. I forgot we were going to even hang out anyway. So it's all good. But what it makes a woman realize is, oh, it puts her in check of you do not mean that much to me. And ironically, for a lot of women, this doesn't make them say, well, fine, screw you. It makes them say, huh. So maybe he leveled up game a little bit and he's got other women sniffing around. And now what's going on? So... Since when? Hmm? Since when ain't it that deep? Hmm? And so I'm like, quit playing with me. You know you be getting mad when I be telling you no. He gonna say, we ain't reached a point where you're worth getting that mad for. Rejected. I mean, you're right, but... You're right. I mean, you're right. Now, maybe, maybe he started watching some, some dating content or some red pill content. And he said, you know something? You are not worth my headache. You are not, like, you're not that much to me. I'm tired of playing the games. And she's like, well, he's right, but damn, man. Like, I didn't want to hear that. God damn. Like, God damn. And I just, when I tell you, I stared at that text for minutes for minutes my jaw on the floor he told he politely told me baby girl you are not that important <laughs> he said you are not worth me stressing over um wow why is she talking about it why this video instead of y'all i got this dude and he's all up in my business this is the problem with sixes sleeping with tens getting chased by threes is because the sixes think they deserve the 10 and they get slept with and they get messed with and, and those tens want nothing to do with them. But those sixes won't learn that lesson. They think they can get the 10. They think they're pretty. They think they're hot. They think they're worth everything. Why? Because of the threes that are still chasing after them. 
And they think, well, because, and they don't realize, see, they don't take the time and all these likes, if you can go on social media and look at who liked your post or look at who commented on it. If she went through and looked at everybody that's like, girl, you're beautiful and I do everything for you and you're smoking hot and I treat you like a princess. If she looked at those people's profiles and it had their jobs and what they do for a living and what they looked like, they're probably losers. Or they're a dude sliding in her DM trying to get in the panties and he's a nine or a 10, but he wouldn't do that, see? So all the validation that these women get are from guys that are well below, below her standing. Because again, we can have the argument about her personality and everything else, but she, she's not hard on the eyes. She's got good teeth, she's got good skin, which and, and she's probably not a big girl. That, that right there puts her in the top 20% even statistically. But because a woman like this will have a 500 or 5,000 or 50,000 or 500,000 thirsty dudes chasing after her that are all well below her standards, she thinks she's inc incredibly popular. She is, but not with anybody she'd want. And the guys that she want, they'll sleep with her and hook up with her but the minute, the minute they say, I'm done with this game, I'm not playing with you anymore. She's like, hmm, what's going on with this guy over here? She's attracted to that because now he's a man with options. That's why the women sleep with the tens and the nines. He has options. That's why women want rich men, athletic men, tall men, because those men have options. The last thing a woman wants to be is what a man has to settle for. Or they, let me correct that. The last thing a woman wants to be is the only thing a guy can get because then she feels like I got a loser. She wants the guy that has choices of a thousand women and choose her. That's why women want like princes, right? They want, they want actors. They want football players. They want basketball players. This man could have anybody and he chose me because I'm so hot and special. That's what makes women go tingly. That's why they want, and so what the, the tens and the nines and the basketball players and the guys with money do is because they know this, they put her in rotation. They say, I'll sleep with you once a week and I'll hint that maybe we could date someday. And she's like, oh boy, I got a chance. I might have snagged a winner because he has choices. But the men that are thirsty and simping for her, she knows they don't have any choices and they're, they're, they have nothing to offer, meaning what they have to offer is not playing hard to get. And if so, if you ever, if you look at like rappers or um, maybe fo football players or any like sports heroes or anything like that, when you think about it, you can look at some of them and you're like, damn, he's not even good looking. Or like Biggie Smalls, he's a big fat dude. And you're like, man, how can Biggie Smalls get women? I mean, yeah, he's a rapper with money, but he's not spending the money on the women. Like he's not treating them special. He's just like some of them he's just sleeping with and discarding because those women say, wow, Biggie Smalls, he could have, I don't know why I chose a rapper reference from the 90s, but they said, oh, he could have anybody. And he's choosing me, a powerful, rich, popular rapper. They, they want to, they want a man that is wanted by others. And until men figure this out, they're always going to suffer. So the guy that wants a girlfriend ironically can't get one. And the guy that really doesn't want to date probably sleeping with a lot of women and has to tell them all no repeatedly. He's not going to sleep with them. So no matter how much you mess with this game, you're never going to win it. It doesn't matter what you do, because even if you do end up like, even if she does land this guy and she starts thinking like, oh man, he's got other options and, and now I'm attracted to him. Okay. What if they start dating? She gives me like, he's a good man to me. He doesn't cheat on me. He doesn't step out on me. He's not mean to me. He's supportive of me. He, he must feel lucky to have me. How boring. <laughs> and then she looks for another dude. That's, I don't know why, but that's how this goes. Lastly, I'll leave it with this. I'm going to save the dating profile for another day because my, my throat's getting tired. <laughs> From Smithsonian Magazine. How the heart bomb racket convinced America that women were up to no good. This is a story about it back in the 1900s. Uh, this case uh, back in the Washington Post in 1915. This is a story about a woman who was 27 who became friends with an 18 year old woman. So 27 and 18 year old. 
not, you know, back then women, even younger women were adulting and growing up kind of young. And so this 27 year old became friends with an 18 year old and they went on a sailing trip to Europe and the 18 year old's father, who was 45, was with them. And what happened is after the trip ended and they got back to, to town, basically, the, the 27 year old woman got rid of all the evidence that the, her and the 18 year old daughter were friends and she spun up a story that she was actually told by the 45 year old that he wanted to marry her and that they were going to you know, spend time together and et cetera, et cetera. This is what they say. Um, the case reported breathlessly by the Washington Post in 1915 was not an isolated incident. In fact, it was only one in a long line of scandalous, seedy, and overreported cases in which unscrupulous women tried to blackmail wealthy men out of large sums of money, helped along by a weird little piece of legislation that allowed uh, people to sue their exes after a broken engagement. These ladies were gold diggers, schemers, and adventuresses. And what they were doing, the paper crow crowed, was nothing short of a racket. The legislation in question was something called the breach of promise or heart balm suit. And it was based on the premise uh, uh, that an engagement was a binding contract between two people. If one person were to break off the contract without consulting the other, the law could step in and award damages on the broken hearted party. So what women would do, and the reason why this came about is because a man would want to sleep with a woman. And the year was 1910. And obviously, he couldn't just go up to women and sleep with them because they weren't all who is like they are today. So he might say, oh, we'll get married and uh, here's a ring and you'll be my fiance. And then he sleeps with her and we'll get married and etc. And then he sleeps with her for six months or a year and he's like, changed my mind, I'm out. And so the law came up with, a, a, or, the, or the government, came up with a law to protect these women from being taken advantage of by unscrupulous men. And what did the women do? The women decided to use the law against good men. And so they said these good men that maybe didn't take advantage of them, they would start saying, oh, well, he promised me this and he said he was gonna do that and we were going to be, and we we're gonna get married and he screwed me out of it. And these guys are like, I never said any such thing. Like show some proof that, that we ever did. And these women could, in some cases, come make it make it up, and in other cases, it was made out of whole cloth. Now, I'm not going to read the whole the whole story here, but my point of this whole like article here: bad men do bad things to good women. Bad women do things to good men. When the law steps in to try to protect good women from bad men, many times those laws will be used by the bad women to do things to good men. This is back from the 1900s, like early 1910s. Smash cut to the year 2024. There was a point in time where men would have children and have a wife, and if these guys were well-to-do or successful, these men would decide, I can go get a, a 23-year-old wife with no kids, and you, well, I already have my kids, I and mean, you're an old wife now, and I want a new wife. And so these guys would, would dump their wives on their heads, and there was no law that says they have to take care of these women. So the women would be put in really bad straits. And men, ironically, said, we need to come up with a law to protect these women. And they did. But then they took it a step further, and they came up with no fault divorce, which is, Maybe a woman's too, you know, too shy to say that he's doing bad things to her. We should just let them dissolve marriage no matter what. And that way, if he's a bad guy, she doesn't have to admit it or shame herself in court. Men came up with that law. Again, it was to protect women. And then the bad women said, hey, look, there's a great law here. I can use this to my advantage. And then good women saw bad women winning and taking advantage and, and, and leaving marriage for no reason after they cheated or whatever and walking out with cash and prizes. And even the good women said, I would like a part of that. And now the good women do what the bad women did. And everybody's taking advantage of all men, whether bad or good. And that's why 
for the Matt Walshes and the rest of them out there saying, just find the right woman. Just find a good woman. Even a good woman with good intentions at the end of the day, when she re uh, realizes she can level up or get a part of a man's resources without ever having to give up anything for herself, even the good women end up joining the bad women and taking advantage of men. And a good example of this is with crime. A lot of cities are letting people just rob things and walk out of the store. And, and they're walking out with armfuls of clothes or bags of sneakers. And even a good person is going to stand there with 60 or $80 worth of makeup or cologne or uh, a tool for, you know, a guy standing in the, in the router aisle and he's holding on to a 15, you know, three or four $15 routers. Uh, he's standing there going, this is 60 or 80 or a hundred bucks worth of stuff right here. This will fit in my pocket. All these people around me are stealing and walking out of the store. Why should I pay? If the bad people can do it, I'm not that bad a person. I pay my taxes. They don't pay any taxes. I do the right thing most of the time. So maybe just this one time I'll stick these routers in my pocket and walk out because the law is letting everybody get away with it. So when enough bad people can break the law, even the good people say, well, why am I going to live by the rules of the law if bad people aren't? And that's what's going on with no-fault divorce. That's what's going on with divorce today. A woman will say, no, he's a good guy. She'll say this to the attorney, if you, if you haven't seen it, James O'Keefe, uh, when he was with Project Veritas. He caught an attorney talking about this on video. And he said, he, she was like, well, yeah, I mean, you know, maybe he is a good guy, but I mean, what, if, if something should have, have happened and maybe he wasn't so good a couple times and he kept money from you, or he yelled at you, we can say, you know, there was some problems here and you can keep the kids and get the cash and prizes, if you know what I'm saying. Wink, wink. And then even the good women are like, eh, you mean I get to keep my kids 100% of the time and I get enough money I can be a stay-at-home mom and I don't have to work anymore and I can just raise my kids and I get child support? and I get alimony, and all I had to do is say he yelled at me a lot and withheld finances. That's all I have to say. It's not like I'm saying he beat the kid. Okay. Yeah, why not? And that's where we are today. So even going back to the 1910s, men made laws to protect women. They made laws to protect because that way it'd keep men from, from lying to them and taking advantage of them. And the minute they did that, the women turned right around and used those laws against good men. And the same thing's happening in marriage today. So how do you win? Say it with me. It's a game you can't play. The only way to win this game is not to play. And the ones that have done it to themselves are women. And until they come around and change these laws, because right here they say at the end of this story, by 1935, the uh, paranoia had grown so extreme that lawmakers were calling for a wholesale elimination of heart balm laws, and soon enough, states were abolishing them right and left. Uh, they were getting rid of them so quickly, in fact, that the constitutionality of some of the reform statutes was later called into question. Still, the message had been, set, uh, the message had been made clear. It was no longer possible to sue over a shattered heart, real or false. So men came up with this law to protect women because men were the lawmakers in 1910. Men came up with this saying, hey, there are other men that are kind of pigs and they're lying to these women. We're going to protect the women. And then the women, ironically, used that law against good men. And then the, the men had to turn right back around and said, women, you ruined it for yourselves. Now we have to get rid of this law. And guess what? Now men can lie to women again. And if you get your heart broken, oh, well. Nothing we can do about it because bad people took advantage of the law. That's what's happening in the dating market. That's what's happening with marketing. That's what, what's happening with social media against men. That's what, what's happening to AI against men. It's what's happening at uh, gym videos of women saying men are looking at them when men are just trying to work out. Like women will abuse the system to their benefit until we take away the nice things. And we have to take away the nice things because they ruin it. They ruin it for other women that actually need it. So ironically, by women hurting men, 
they're actually hurting the women that need something the most. Case in point, the also me movement. You know, that was meant to protect women from being taken advantage of by bad men. And now women are just overusing it to the point that it's being abused and you have to take it away because now innocent men are getting hurt by it. Innocent women are getting hurt by it. You know, I, I catch a lot of flack for saying women are just big children, but a lot of times they, they work against their own best interests because ultimately if there's something that's easy and quick and, and cheap, and they're going to take advantage of it. There's a lot of guys that do that too, but ultimately those men will lose because society unfairly supports the women. Uh, guys, I appreciate you hanging out. Oh, this is a kind of a long one today. Um, I'll have another one out for you uh, shortly. I appreciate it. If you like my work, join me over on betterbachelor.locals.com. Great community of guys. We do movie nights every weekend. We have a lot of fun. So hope you can swing by and join us and I'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.